Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you are back. If you are new, hi, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they, them. Um, and if you're back, welcome back. Either way, thank you so, so much for clicking on my video today. Today's video, I'm super, super excited about it. Basically, I think like maybe a year ago, I customized this like pleather jacket and in it I was talking about how like you don't have to like just make your jacket about like bands. You can also like make theme jackets about like whatever you're interested, shows, movies, holidays, like I made a Halloween jacket, interests, like vampires, and if you saw the title of this video, that's what this video is about, is I finally made a vampire jacket. Basically went to the thrift store, picked up this oversized kind of corduroy shirt, and I just added a bunch of patches and three-dimensional pieces and things. So if you're interested in seeing the DIY portion, then feel free to keep on watching. If you don't care about the DIY and just want to see the results, uh, the timestamps will be below. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm super excited to show you. Okay, so for me, step one is to go through my closet, my wardrobe, my trinkets, my patches, my stencils, and pull out anything and everything that I could possibly kind of relate to this project and lay it all out so I get an idea of the materials that I'm working with and what I can start to do with things. I had a couple of band and movie patches that were either vampire related or just remind me of vampires in some way or another, so I pulled the stencils that I had made of those out, but I also wanted to make a couple, and so I printed out these ones as my first kind of round to add and I have a tutorial that kind of explains how to make stencils in detail but basically I'm cutting them out gluing them down to freezer paper then I mark out all the spots that I want to leave uh, so that my stencil kind of stays in one piece and doesn't fall apart and I use a very sharp exacto knife to cut all my little pieces out making sure to leave those gaps where I've drawn the red lines I like to use a pair of tweezers uh, to help pull out all the little pieces of the stencil but basically we're just going slow and steady cutting everything out and doing that with all of the stencils that I've printed. So this is what it looks like when it's fully cut out. Then I'm taking this black fabric that used to be a shirt, lint rolling it and ironing it and placing my freezer paper stencil onto it. Then just kind of ironing it down. You can use a pressing cloth between it and I cut out the piece that I want, leaving some space so that I can fold over the edges. And then I'm just taking some white acrylic paint and a makeup sponge and doing a really light layer, dabbing on white paint to the surface of the patch. I have my little helper Tuna here who's always welcome in the space and the trick in my opinion to getting like really nice clean lines with patches is to go really really light layers, do multiple layers and let everything dry in between otherwise you can get like bleeding out of the edges and stuff. Also if the patches start to lift you can iron them before continuing but use a pressing cloth. Uh, so I'm going ahead with second layer and eventually the third layer and I think three layers for me on this fabric with this acrylic paint worked out but I I also have screen printing ink that I like to use on white fabric. For instance, this Vampira patch, I'm using some black screen printing ink and just some white cotton fabric to get that all done. With screen printing ink, you tend to not have to do as many layers, but once everything's dry and layered as much as I want it to be, I can very carefully and gently peel off the stencils from the fabric and see my work. If you are feeling picky or the design requires it, you can always fill in the little gaps with paint or screen printing ink or whatever it is that you used. And I do this with some of the patches. The gaps used to bother me a lot and I used to like really religiously fill them in all the time. Now I only do it with like certain patches, like if I have faces and that kind of thing. So you can see me just going in with a black fabric marker since it's a little easier to control than the screen printing ink. And just coloring in all those gaps and lines so we get a more consistent patch. But I don't do this with all of them because I honestly it looks fine and I just am not gonna bother. <laughs> Once everything is dry, inked down, and filled in if I want it to be, I can go ahead and use my iron to hem all the edges down. I'm gonna sew them down as well, but I find that they are easier to sew down if they're already like hemmed and nice and crisp and then way all the edges are like nice and clean, but obviously you don't have to do this if you don't want to. This is what all the patches that I made in a round one look like. I found later that I did want a couple more patches, uh, but this is what the first iteration is looking like. Now I also wanted to make some little bat wing patches, so I'm taking a piece of wrapping paper and tracing out just kind of like a vague pattern that I think would work. Once I have a shape that I am happy with, I can just go ahead and cut it out with some scissors. Once it's cut out, I can take two pieces of black felt and layer them on top of each other, and then I pin my pattern through the two pieces of felt. You could do this one at a time, but I just found it easier to, you know, make one set. But I'm going ahead with my fabric scissors and cutting out the bat wing shape, then removing the pins 
and checking them out. I like how they look, but you can trim them if anything is not to your liking. Um, and then I'm taking some white embroidery floss and a big needle and marking out the spot that I would like the veins of the bat wings to go. And then with my embroidery floss, I'm just filling in the three that are in the center. Since I'm gonna stitch the border around my jacket, I just wanted to do the three inner lines separately. I'm basically just doing three lines of solid stitches all the way up on both of the bat wings, um, so we have kind of that little pattern. Now I can grab my jacket and lay it out flat, try to find the center of it as best as I can, and lay the bat wings in a way that is as symmetrical as possible. Once I'm pretty happy with the placement, I can go ahead and pin them down. As usual, I would recommend trying on your piece before you start stitching it down. Once I am happy with the placement, I can start stitching it. An embroidery hoop can be quite helpful in this process as it helps like kind of keep everything straight and flat, but don't worry if you don't have one, you can totally stitch things on without one. Just going ahead and doing that straight stitch all across the border of this. Now I'm laying out my jacket again and I'm taking this grommet tape. This is really helpful because you don't have to measure out the grommets yourself and make sure that they're aligned properly and you can make like corset lacing on whatever you'd like. So I'm just cutting out two pieces that will go up kind of the center back of the jacket, pinning them in place, and then using my sewing machine to just stitch the outer layer of them down. I'm obviously leaving the inner layer open so that the ribbon can be strung through it. Once they're both stitched down, I can go ahead and take this red ribbon that I think I found at the thrift store and lace it all the way through the grommets in kind of the crisscross style. I think it looks really fancy and corsetti and vampiric, so I was really happy with the overall effect of this. Now it's time to make a couple of little like straps and things. So I'm taking this red velvet fabric that I had left over from another project and I'm measuring out this piece that's about as thick as this buckle that I had, trimming it to size and folding it in half so it's this kind of rectangle. Doing this with three other pieces of velvet and I actually had to redo this because I made them way too short I didn't account for the folding over of them but regardless uh, the process is the same I'm just going ahead and folding these little tubes of velvet until I have three of them and then when they're folded inside out I'm using my sewing machine to stitch a line down them then I turn them the right side out and then with the seam folded down the middle I'm doing two stitches down each side so it's kind of more professional looking and a little bit more structured and then I'm taking the buckle that I measured out and placing it into the strap folding it over a little bit and then just stitching it in and then repeating that with the other three pieces as you can see they kind of go in descending order of like the biggest one is the longest and the smallest one is the shortest and once I have the three of them done I'm laying them out in a way that I find would be appealing and then it's time to kind of start planning out where the other patches I've made so far will go so I'm just taking out the stencils that by this point are dry and filled in and look as nice as I would like them to look. And I can go ahead and play around with the placement of this. Uh, usually this will take me a couple of tries to get right and honestly I will pin things down and then try it on and then go from there and adjust and readjust and change things. Once I'm happy with where everything is I can go ahead and use some sewing pins to pin it down, double check the placement while I've tried it on, and then go ahead and start stitching everything in place. I thought it'd be fun to use red thread. I think it turned out really well. Normally I use white thread on black patches and black thread on white patches because I like the contrast that way, but I figured adding a little bit of red would tie all the other red elements that I wanted to eventually add to it together. I'm going ahead with a zigzag stitch, and as usual, I'm setting it at like maximum width and max maximum length, so I get just these like lovely big chunky stitches. They almost remind me of like fangs in the way that they're like pointy like that, so I really like how it looks. For my little velvet straps, I'm using a combination of embroidery thread on the buckle parts and just regular sewing machine stitching on the other part. I wanted them to just be super secure since to be fair they are a little bit heavy. I wanted to mix in a little bit of like the aristocratic classy vampire look um, into this project so I decided lace sleeves would be a good start to that. I found this lace at the thrift store and it's like double layered. I turned the jacket inside out and just pinned it all across the one cuff, tried it on, made sure that I liked it, and then go ahead and do that with the other cuff. Uh, with this one I am using black stitching because I don't want there to be visible uh, obvious stitching showing on the other side, but sewing it inside out makes it look like I'm wearing like a frilly shirt or something that's peeking out from underneath the jacket, and I think it's just like a really nice effective look. So that's what the little lacy sleeves are looking like. 
And I was thinking, why have one set of wings when you can have two? So I'm taking some wrapping paper to sketch out a pattern and laying out my jacket flat and then tracing out kind of the side of it that I'm going to open, tracing out this sort of bat wing shape that I'd like. Once I have a shape that I'm happy with, I can go ahead and cut it out with my scissors. And I have this absolutely beautiful fabric. It's like this velvet lace that I found at Fabricland on sale when I was looking for some material to make this fancy capelet that I wanted and I thought it would be really perfect so fold it in half so I will get two even patterns and then pin my pattern down onto it with my sewing pins as usual and then carefully with fabric scissors I can cut out the pattern that I would like. I am not leaving any seam allowance on the points of the bat wing because I am not going to be hemming it at all, uh, but I am leaving a seam allowance kind of on the part that will be kind of touching my arm. I can cut open the fabric that's been folded in half so I have my two beautiful bat wing patterns. And then I'm going in with a seam ripper and a tiny pair of nail scissors and just carefully opening up the jacket on the side. If you're lazy like I usually am, just cut it open. It's not a big deal. You're gonna sew it back together. And honestly, this jacket's so big that I probably could have cut it open, but I was trying to be professional and whatever, it's fine. Once it's all cut from waist to the wrist, I am sandwiching that lace sleeve inside and then just pinning it in place with some sewing pins so that I can try it on, make sure it fits, and then sew it down. I feel if I had turned the jacket inside out and maybe done this, this would have been a little more uh, professional looking, but because of the corduroy like lines that the jacket has, it honestly doesn't look so bad with the stitching the way that I ended up doing it. So I guess there could be a slightly more professional way to do this. The main thing that I wanted was for the wing to be sandwiched inside the jacket and that turned out. Again with this I am using black thread so that you can't see it too much, but I'm just going ahead and sewing down the lace and in doing so I'm also re-closing the side of the jacket and then repeating on the other side. I wanted to add a little bit more fun to some of my patches, so for this one with my little Living Dead doll, a Phoenix, I decided to add a little bit of red lace trim. I found this at the thrift store and it's like a combination of ribbon and lace and I just think it's so cute and the red color kind of matched the velvet and the ribbon that I was already using, so figured why not use it. Going ahead and just pinning it all down the patch so that when I pin it onto my jacket I can just sew both layers down together. I also thought it would be fun to have like a little coffin patch, so I'm taking some wrapping paper so I can get like a nice even pattern on it and sketching out half coffin shape I'm doing this so I can get it symmetrical and then I cut that out double check that it's a good size and it's a little big so I just go ahead and trim down one of the sides a little bit more until I am happy with the shape and when I am I can take that red velvet fabric that I had and pin my pattern onto it. And I am leaving a seam allowance because I'm going to try to hem all the edges down. I didn't use any fabric interfacing and I would recommend doing that and I'll show you how to do that uh, when I make some bats for this. But for now I just decided to try to like iron down all the edges so I would get like the nice clean coffin shape and it was not that uh, effective because uh, velvet doesn't really like to hold creases. Um, from an iron, I find. So, you know, uh, points for trying, but it is what it is. So I'm going ahead and just pinning all the layers down around the pattern and then taking the little piece of paper out once it's all in place and then putting the folded over little coffin shape onto my jacket and sewing it down. Because of like the flexibility of the velvet and its inability to hold the iron, it ended up being like a little bit lopsided, but I honestly don't think it looks that bad. To add a little bit of extra visual interest though, I decided to make a ribbon cross on it, so I'm just taking two pieces of black ribbon, forming them into a little cross shape, pinning it in place, and then using my sewing machine. I think it ends up making it look much more like a coffin and less just like a weird lumpy red shape. So yeah. As mentioned, this is round two of the patches that I decided to make. I just wanted a couple extra vampire movies on it. And to add a little bit of extra visual interest to another patch, I have this one that's of Raven Madison from the Vampire Kisses manga, and I am just adding a little bit of red lace trim all around her. I think it almost makes it look like it's a fancy picture frame or something, and it's just like a fun 
fun, interesting detail. And once all my patches are ready to go, I can put the jacket on my mannequin and try to like pin everything in place. As usual, it takes me a couple of tries to make sure that I like the placement of everything and, you know, trial and error is the name of the game. Don't be frustrated if it doesn't look right the first time. You can always undo the stitches and sew it somewhere else or take it off completely or change it up as you go. Like these projects, in my opinion, are ever changing. And that's the fun thing about it. Like your clothes can grow with you when you DIY. And I just think it's so much fun. Um, regardless, I'm going ahead and adding all those patches in a place that I think that they would work and then using my sewing machine to secure them all in place. I wanted a few more velvet patches, so I pulled up some pictures of bat silhouettes on my laptop that I could try to like kind of vaguely copy, pulling out, as usual, my wrapping paper to do my attempts at little bat sketches. <laughs> and I like to use this wrapping paper because it has a grid on it, that way I can uh, fold it in half knowing the exact center and get like really symmetrical lines when I'm doing this kind of thing. Once I have my three bats that I more or less like, I am marking down which side I like, if there's one that's good and one that's not, and then cutting those patterns out. I'm taking this heat bond fabric interfacing uh, material and putting it on like the bad side of the velvet, putting a little piece of parchment paper over top as sort of a pressing cloth uh, so it doesn't you know, stick to everything. Um, and once it's pressed together, I can cut out my little rectangle of heat bond and velvet. Um, then I'm taking those little patterns that I made of the back and pinning them onto the fabric so that I can trace out the shape and then cut them out. As usual, I'm just using a regular marker and my fabric scissors to cut out the patterns of the bats. Um, I'm not leaving any seam allowance because I'm not going to hem these guys, and once they're all nice and cut out, I can place them onto the jacket and decide the best arrangement for them. I ended up kind of making them look like they're flying up the waist on the back. And I think it looks really cute, especially since it kind of ties in to the velvet coffin and the corset lacing up the back. And I'm just using my sewing machine to put all the patches from the bats to the rest of the stencils in place. So a couple years ago, there were these like fashion shows that had this blood embroidery thing that I was just thought was the coolest thing ever and I've been wanting to recreate it ever since I saw it and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. So I have all these like little red beads that I found at the thrift store at various times and I'm just using some red thread and a needle to go ahead and kind of try to sew some little blood spatter embroidery things down it. I'm not an embroidery expert by any means, so none of this is professional. I'm just trying to kind of do like little lines of like long skinny beads and kind of big blotches at the top and try to do my best to emulate the blood spatter images that I'd seen before. And doing that all across one of the pockets. I did place a piece of felt behind the pocket so that it has a little bit more structure since I was worried about the beads being heavy, but they're honestly not too bad. I used like maybe three or four glass beads, but most of them are these like tiny little plastic red ones. This is how it looked at the end. I think it's quite cool, though if I were to do it again, I think I would ease up on the large beads and kind of maybe only do the really small ones. Anyway, I think it looks good. Now that the majority of the jacket itself is done, I can start working on making all these little trinkets and accessories and modifying the ones I have, so let's get into that. First, I wanted a faux rosary, so I'm making one with these silver plastic beads that I found at the thrift store, all these little eye pins uh, that are from Michaels, and a pair of tweezers. I have quite an in-depth tutorial on my channel about how to make these faux rosary bead things, but they're very easy, and I'll link my tutorial and the tutorial that I learned from on this. As the separator beads, I'm using these little skull charms, and I'm making it quite small. I think I use like four beads per chain, and then the separator, like five rounds of them, maybe four rounds of them. I don't remember at this point. Regardless, I close them all together with this big jump ring and then put a chain down it and then a couple extra little chains at the bottom and for the charm at the very bottom I'm using this tooth that I got I think on AliExpress or something a long time ago. Then I have this little doll hand that's uh, kind of from those like Christmas angels. I'm taking a pen and writing on it drink and live, um, referencing kind of the vampire, like, drink its blood after it drinks your, that whole thing, you know. Um, and I'm taking a little uh, paintbrush with some red paint and drawing two little dots with some blood dripping down them. So it has, like, the little fresh vampire bite on this little doll hand, so I think that's quite fun. And then I'm taking this chopstick and cutting it with a pair of 
pliers. I also added like a little bit of a notch into it so I'll be able to more easily wrap a piece of wire around it. And I'm taking some brown paint from the dollar store and just kind of roughly applying it all the way around it. Uh, then I am using some red paint to give it like a blood spatter, um, just stabbed a vampire in the heart kind of steak effect. So we got that there. And then I have these earrings that I found at the thrift store. I think they're supposed to be like tusks or fangs or something. And I figured they were missing some blood. So I'm going ahead and just adding some red paint to emulate some fangs that have just been feeding perhaps. I'm removing the little gold chain that's at the top because that's not really my style and then with a little bit of enamel paint painting over the white kind of hoop that's built into it and adding like a line of silver at the top so it looks like it's being held in by a little silver charm holder instead of just being a plastic tooth i guess and what vampire jacket would be complete without a little blood vial oh my gosh it took me a couple tries to get the consistency right and i think i'm happy with the end result uh, but you can see me struggling with it here uh, first i'm putting some canola oil into the blood vial and then my food coloring and because of the fact that food coloring is mostly like water it's not mixing with the oil which gives it this kind of cool effect it's a little bit like blood bubbles almost it looks like which is fun if you're going for blood bubbles in suspended oil i think this could be a good option for you that wasn't what i was going for so instead i would add a little bit of dish soap to try to help it emulsify so i poured out some of the oil and then added some of the dish soap in and that made it look really cool it got all weird and drippy as it's like slowly emulsifying and you can see it there so that's a, a fun a thing if you're looking for that. <laughs> I tried to stir it with a toothpick but it wasn't really working so I emptied out more of the oil and added more dish soap and added more food coloring um, and kept doing that until eventually I had this consistency which I'm pretty happy with. It honestly looks like blood that's been in a jar for a while. Maybe some of it's coagulated to the bottom but you know it's still pretty cool and bloody looking so go ahead and seal that jar off and on to the next little accessory thing. So these are some little plastic bat rings that I got at the dollar store around Halloween. I sprayed them with some matte spray, uh, Mr. Super Clear in my case, but anything should work. Um, and then I'm using a needle to poke two little holes in them so I can kind of use them as buttons. Since it's soft plastic, it's not too difficult to just use a big needle for this purpose. Then I'm taking some enamel paint and a paintbrush and just very lightly brushing over the bat and I can then cut off the little portion that makes them a ring. Uh, so these are all my little accessories that I've made so far. I thought it would be fun to finally try my hand at making some little clay garlics so I found a super helpful tutorial on YouTube that I'll be sure to link below and I tried my best to follow it. So I'm using some kind of purpley clay, translucent clay, and white clay to make this little stack <laughs> I guess you could say and then it's just a matter of layering the stack cutting it in half, folding it over, squishing it, and repeating as many times as you can until you get those nice little lines throughout it. Once my stack is satisfactorily striped, I guess you could say, I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut little thin layers of it out. And look at those, those look so fun, like cute little agates or something. And then I'm taking a piece of white clay and rolling out uh, kind of a little tube of it. I'm trying to make these quite a bit larger than the ones in the tutorial that I followed, uh, but I think it worked out and I tried to make a couple of different sizes just to see what ended up working best. Going ahead and just rolling out that clay so it's nice and smooth together and then I can pinch the top of it and cut the bottom of it and just shape it with my hands into the little garlic shape. I'm putting a little eye pin into the top of it so I can use it as a little charm. Then I can use this kind of blunt knife type of tool to add all the little clove separations into it and look at this oh my gosh it's so cute um i had quite a bit of that purple striped clay left over so i'm going ahead and making multiple of these garlics just so i have lots of options for what i would like to use and then i go ahead and bake them in the oven and when they're out of the oven i can let them cool down and then take this burlap rope stuff cut it into little chunks little little scraps and use a little bit of hot glue to make that garlic tuft at the bottom 
with the with the burlap rope scraps it's such a cute idea and like honestly so genius i i absolutely love um the tutorial that i followed these are like the cutest little little fake garlics that i've ever seen very very pleased with them next i have this brooch that i found at the thrift store it's like gold with a yellow flower in it um and i sprayed it with some mr super clear and then painted it over with some black matte paint once it's satisfactorily covered i went ahead and used some enamel paint and you'll notice when i use enamel i wear gloves and also a mask because enamel is very toxic so if you are using it please use it in a ventilated area follow safety precautions and uh yeah be very very careful regardless i am getting it all nice and painted and it's just looking so beautiful so lovely and shiny and just absolutely perfect you can also just use regular silver paint it's not that different and then i'm going ahead and once the enamel is dry i am taking some very watered down black paint and doing this antiquing look over it by just putting watered down black paint into the crevices and i have this little fly that i found at the dollar store i've sprayed him with some mr super clear and then i'm adding a little bit of enamel over him so he just looks kind of fun and rusticy and fancy and this brooch had like this weird backing on it that i couldn't understand how to put on things so i decided to just cut it off and replace it with one that i am more familiar with this was a little harder than i thought but i managed to get it off with some pliers and then i attached this regular kind of pin backing diagonally to the back of it and then i could take my little fly charm that i had made and with a little hot glue secure it to the center and seriously look how cute that is it's like a little renfield brooch that's what I was thinking of when I made it and I think it's just like very very cute and for the buttons the original ones on there were like these kind of tan tortoiseshell situations so I removed them and replaced them with these skull beads I think I found these on like AliExpress or Amazon or something forever ago but they're just these like silver skulls I'm sure you can find these at many different craft stores or online if you search up something similar and as you can see they're just these really fun tiny little skulls so morbid and creepy and cute and it was time to start putting together there's some of my little accessories that I made. I've been really inspired by like chatelaines recently and just like the concept of a bunch of little trinkets being held together on chains dangling from one larger trinket like I just I love it. So I'm taking my little blood vial that I made and using a piece of wire to wrap around it and make a little loop that way I'll be able to hang it off of a chain and I have this silver piece. I don't really know what it's for but I think it's just like a cool metal silver piece. I'm taking one of my little garlics, my tiny stake that I made, and this plastic cross that I found at the thrift store forever ago. I'm using a little piece of wire to wrap around my stake in the notch that I had made earlier in it. Uh, this way it will be able to kind of hang off of a little piece of chain. And once its wire loop is around it, I can kind of arrange everything in the way that I would like it to lay. So I'm having the garlic on kind of a short chain on the side, the stake in the center on the longest chain, and the cross on the other side on like kind of a medium chain I guess you could say and I'm just using a little jump ring to attach all the pieces together. I think it ended up looking really cute just these three little vampire hunter symbols I guess hanging off of this other silver piece. I don't know it's cute and fun and I ended up wanting to make another one of these that was a little bit more complex but this was um, attempt number one. Next I wanted to make these little like blood drop revealets that I ended up using for something different eventually but basically I'm taking a piece of red thread with a needle tying a bead at the bottom of it and then just using those same red beads that I used for the embroidery to make kind of a blood drop effect down it as usual using the smallest ones at the bottom and the biggest ones at the top till I have kind of two little strands of like blood drop and then I have this little kind of keychain thing that I found at the thrift store it's silver and pretty and has bells on it but I removed the bells first so I had some extra space into it and then with a chain decided to attach that little blood vial charm that I had made I also attached that little blood drop on thread but ended up removing it later so you won't see it there in the final product uh, but I'm also just adding a bunch of other extra little charms on chains teeth little cross a small skull charm, this weird old like pen tip thing, and just other random little silvery knickknacks that I found and thought would like suit it in one way or another. Now that all my accessories are modified or made or whatever, I can lay everything out again and try to decide where all the kind of 3D things will go. I like to generally get my patches on and down first, um, so it's easier to sew things 
on the sewing machine while everything's flat. And then once all of the patches are sewn down, I can go ahead and add all the 3D things and the dangly bits and the things that might get tangled if I were to try to sew on a bunch of patches while they were on the sewing machine with. Uh, but yeah, have all these pieces from the thrift store, from Amazon, from AliExpress, handmade, um, from just random places that I found. So I'm just laying them all out as possible options, things that I could use, and then laying out my jacket and testing out a bunch of different placement opportunities for them. I think that the rosary would look really cool if it was like kind of hanging out of the pocket. I thought that it would be cool to have the little chatelaine things on opposite sides. I know that's not what they are, but that's what they were kind of inspired by, so let me call them that. <laughs> um, I'm putting my little garlics on the velvet, but I don't really like that, so I'm trying a bunch of different placements for things, uh, like the hand, a little cross, and honestly, these are all subject to change as I wear it and things inevitably fall off <laughs> or I get sick of them. It'll change, and that's the cool part of it. I thought the little blood drops would be cool coming off the neck, like a just bitten vampire, and I have all these little swords that I thought would be really fun to attach as they kind of look like crosses from far away. Time to add everything with thread, embroidery floss, and whatever else I have. For these little bats on the collar, I have those like holes that I poke through to make them almost into buttons, but for most everything else, I'm just kind of going in with embroidery floss and attaching it in as secure a way as I can and just hoping for the best. I'm honestly a little bit worried to wear this out, but I tried not to put anything too crazy sentimental or expensive on it like most of the 3d things are from the dollar store or the thrift store or amazon or whatever so it's not the biggest deal as usual it's really important to try it on as you go make sure nothing's too heavy make sure nothing's like making the fabric lay weird adding extra stitches for security if you need whatever you would like i also thought it'd be fun to add all these safety pins down the one side of it and stitch all these like little swords and crosses into it and what jacket is complete without spikes so i'm going ahead and measuring out three little spots to put these quite large spikes that I found online <laughs> into. I'm poking a little hole with nail scissors in and then poking the bottom screw of the spike in and then the top in as well. I will hopefully get some washers to put between them eventually so that they have less chance of falling out since corduroy fabric is not really the most sturdy but it's fine. Um, and I also secured them with a screwdriver eventually. I just didn't have one handy when I was filming this. Um, but yes, and the last little thing that I am doing for now is the sleeves are just way too white. And I figured my vampire character maybe could be a bit of a messy eater. So I'm taking some red paint and just splattering it all across with a paintbrush on the sleeves. Um, I'm starting with like kind of little droplets until I get a little bit more bold and make some kind of bigger splotchy things. I think it just adds a little bit of an extra horror element to it, which I love. Um, so yeah, now let's get into the final result of it. I'm so excited to show you. So this is the final look. These fangs keep falling out, but um, the jacket I think turned out pretty solid. I'll go into like all the details of it now. So um, yes, let's get pedantic into it. I'm really, really excited about how it ended up turning out. Starting at the top of the collar, we have those two little bats that are like the Halloween rings. I think they're absolutely fantastic. They're just like little plastic bats with a silver enamel paint, but they look like so fancy and antique -y and I absolutely love it. Got the blood on the neck, so it looks like a, a freshly bitten vampire. All down the front of it, we have skull buttons that I think are absolutely fantastic. This cross, I think Cage found it just out and about. It's just like this really pretty ornate cross and he gave it to me and I decided to add it to this jacket. This little brooch was like that DIY originally gold brooch with the flower on it and now it's like a silver and black brooch with the bug. This big sword I just like stitched on with some embroidery thread and it's from like this big pack of swords that I found on AliExpress. This sword was also included in that one and this one's like very corny. I like it a lot. It like is very like Y2K anime sword with like the wings and everything. I love it. And then I don't know what this is. I think it might be like for scrapbooking originally but I attached to it my little garlic charm my little stake, which was a chopstick, and my little crucifix that's like just plastic. And I added some stitching on it so it would like stay in place because before I just like couldn't get it to lay correctly. So, you know, decided to add that. At the top, we have three spikes on each side. I will add washers to them, like between them so they stay in better, but you know, one thing at a time. This guy, I might stitch on better, but he's just like this little devil guy. I don't know if you guys have these where you're from, but at least when I was a kid, I remember going to like 
bowling alleys and they would be kind of like in these vending machine things and recently i found a bunch of them at the thrift store so he was from the thrift store but i just think he's so cute and like having a little devil on the shoulder is just like i don't know i think it's fun got the sisters of mercy patch i have reused this stencil like four or five times it's just clinging on for dear life but hey um, i will keep using it as long as i can blood embroidery i think it's so super fun and i'm excited to see how it holds up 45 grave patch which as we've mentioned is a fantastic kind of like horror punk band then i have oops uh, this little red kind of gem. I think I found it at a thrift store or something. I'm not super sure where it's from. And then The Lost Boys, which is a fantastic 80s vampire movie. The Hunger, which is another awesome vampire movie, which if you haven't seen it, it has David Bowie and Susan Sarandon. And an opening of Bella Lugosi's Dead with Bauhaus. Like, what more do you need? Just check it out it's super fun um well i wouldn't say it's fun it's very like slow and artsy but at least watch the first 10 minutes of it because you must and then this is another little sword that was like from that sword pack i think it's super cool this vampira patch fantastic i might try to like fill in the black parts better later but we'll see and then this lugosi patch which i just found online it's cool yes as i've mentioned these are stencils that i have made then we'll start at the bottom of this we've got my little garlic cloves so fun this little crucifix my little drink and live arm that was like a little christmas angel arm a while ago my dad gave me just like a big box of like christmas angel heads and arms because he's like these seem like something you might like, and I was like, yes, they, they very much are. And this was like a perfect fun little thing to do with it. Cage has also made some really cool stuff with them. And then I put this little silver bat charm on it. This, I think, was like in a big pack of charms. Like I just looked up Halloween charms on Amazon forever ago and just bought like a big 40 pack, and I think this was one of them. This bone is from the dollar store around Halloween. And then these red velvet straps are just handmade with like these buckles that I found pretty much all at the thrift store or I've just been keeping. Like basically, if I have a belt that breaks, a necklace that breaks, a piece of, like I always uh, squirrel all the like little metallic parts away for future projects like this. And then lots of times at one of my local thrift stores, they'll just sell big bags of like buckles and chain and D rings and L rings and like whatever and I just, buy those and stockpile them for projects like this. And then here, I did make this removable because I might get like annoyed with it being all jingly and stuff, but I have this little thing that was from a lanyard at work, a little keychain ring, and then this which was a keychain that I found at the thrift store and then added all these fun vampire elements to it. So let's start from the bottom. We have this little blood vial that is just pretty much dish soap and food coloring, but I think it looks quite fun. A little plastic cross. I think I got these forever ago. Like when I was 12 years old and I was like first having my goth fades, I bought this big pack of plastic crosses from Michaels and I think this is left over from then. I have this silver tooth that is from AliExpress. It was just like a big pack of teeth. I think this is supposed to be like a pen nib kind of thing, but I just thought it was cool. So I wrapped a piece of wire around it and added it on. And then this skull bead is actually the same as the skull beads that I used for the buttons, but I just like added a piece of wire around the back so I could loop it onto the chain. And I've just attached all of those to like a little string of chains essentially. As I said, it's kind of inspired by like chatelaines, which are, you would hold like all your important like sewing things and prayer items and trinkets and reliquaries and stuff on like a big ring and just like have it off your belt so it would be like easily accessible. So yeah, kind of inspired by those. And then I have this Dracula patch. This is the second or third time that I've used this stencil that I made. So it keeps coming in handy, I love it. This London After Midnight patch, I have my rosary that I handmade and that has like this little tooth charm and I say a rosary because it doesn't like have the correct number of beads and it's not like for that purpose it's just like supposed to kind of look like one of those um and then I still don't know how to say this band's name but that patch they're a wonderful band and then the damned which is another wonderful band and then I just added a bunch of big safety pins down the front of it to add like a little bit of texture got matching spikes like on the other side so that's the front of it now let's talk about the sides <laughs> this is a living dead doll named phoenix I was originally gonna like fill the eyes in red and fill like these little spots like blood spatter on her dress red I might still do that I don't know we'll see but regardless right now she's just like a spooky little ah. and basically this is like the living dead doll 
box art that they did for the first couple series. They didn't do it for the later ones, which is like super, super sad because I love these designs. It's all like the dolls with like their little hands out and I've done like a couple of these before in other jackets, but yeah. This is my first Phoenix and I think she's just super, super cute and like as a little devil gal, she's not quite a vampire, but I think she suits it. Lestat, of course, fantastic movie. Anne Rice, great. Bauhaus, I know, not technically vampiric, but like Bella Lugosi's dead, like there's something there that we can add to it. Plus it's a great band, so sue me. And then my blood spattered sleeves, and I say blood, but it's red acrylic paint. Um, but it's blood, no. I think they look super cool. And then I have a little skull button thing holding the sleeve together. And then as we discussed, the lace bat wing that is not hemmed. And if it frays, that will just make it look even more cool and like edgy and vampiric. I've like kind of played with the idea of distressing this jacket a little bit to make it look more antique -y, but I'll probably just let the sands of time do that naturally since it's gonna be inevitable. Then we've got Fright Night, which is just a fun old vampire movie. I haven't seen the remake, but the old ones fun and goofy. Then there's Bella Lugosi as Dracula Patch. I realized that I actually have to fill in some of these lines, so shh, no I don't, but yeah, looking good and it'll look even better once I've filled it in. And then this Raven Madison from the Vampire Kisses manga patch. I have been rereading the Vampire Kisses books. I'm on number seven, Cryptic Cravings, right now, and listen, they are so corny, they are so goofy, they have my whole heart. I love them so much. As much as they're very, like, not like other girls and, like, corny vampire romance, I love them so much. They're so goofy, and, like, if you've read them on my behalf and you were expecting, like, fantastic literary prose and incredible depth of words and all that. No, I'm sorry. They're just like so goofy and so fun and I love them so much. So yes, Raven Madison had to go onto the jacket. She's just like such a cool character. I really want to do some cosplays of her coming up soon. And then I added just like red lace that I found at the thrift store around it. And then of course the other matching sleeve like on the back and the other matching bat wing. All right, and now let's go to the back of the jacket. So at the top we have this vamp patch. This is referencing the movie Vamp, uh, which is just like a, it's like a fun kind of comedy horror movie. It has Grace Jones as the vampire, and it's all just like very surreal and interesting. It's set in a strip club, so it's very like kind of raunchy comedy, so if that's not your thing, I wouldn't recommend it. But um, it was enjoyable, it was fun, and I thought it suited it because basically I have just been getting right back into all the vampire movies <laughs> lately. I have this big running list and Cage and I, dinner every night, I just like pull one up off the list and I'm like, all right, tonight we're watching Vampire Circus. Okay, tonight we're watching Nosferatu. Like, sorry, that's what it is. <laughs> and it's great. I'm having so much fun. So I'm leaving space on the bottom of my jacket for as I watch more movies and read more books and continue to enrich my vampire knowledge and repertoire and references, I could just keep adding to the jacket and keep making it even more fun because yeah I, I've been even watching like some movies lately that I'm like oh my god I like need to add the layer of the white worm like as a patch and oh my god I need to add daybreakers and like oh my god like you, it's a whole thing I have so much fun with these things it's almost like the jacket is like a diary for me right now of like being into the things and like looking at jackets over my life I can see them as like diary entries of like the person that I was and like the things that I cared about and like what I put on the patch and like oh this like specific patch was like from this friend or like this is like fabric that Cage's mom gave to me or like what like it's just like so cool. I'm getting off topic. <laughs> Next is the little felt bat wings and you could totally just do like straight embroidery without putting felt onto this. I just thought it would be kind of a good idea for structure and stuff since corduroy is not the thickest material on its own, let's be honest, but I think it looks nice. And it's kind of like velvety, that's why I picked it and also because it was like under 10 bucks. Then we have this Akasha patch. I couldn't find a nice font or picture of like just the word Akasha so I just put it in Canva in a nice font and I think it looks nice. And then Near Dark which is a fun cowboy vampire movie. Cage loves westerns so whenever I like find a cowboy vampire movie I'm like okay let's go add this to the rotation so there's like a little something extra for Cage. It's a lot of fun. Uh, then we have Queen of the Damned which is another amazing amazing goofy as hell but delightful and very close to my heart and Rice at Vampire movie. Listen, I feel like I've been watching a lot of the Maven of the Eventide as well lately and she says often that uh, vampire movies are not good for the most part. Like it's very hard to find like an actually good one but um, you know I find that there's like something to love about every single one even if they're goofy, even if they're bad and I love bad movies. Cage and I have been going to this local movie night lately at like one of our local kind of alternative bars where they'll just play like 
really crappy movies from like the 70s and 80s. We watched Troll 2, we watched Tammy and the T-Rex, just like the goofiest stuff um, and it's just like so fun. So I am a big supporter and fan of like bad old movies. So if you look at the movies on this jacket and you're like, that movie sucks, the vampires and that suck, I don't care. I love them all. <laughs> There's something to love about every single vampire. <laughs> and then we have Paralyzed Age, another patch, which I made. And thank you, someone pointed out to me in my last video that despite the fact that this is not how one would spell Paralyzed Age in English, this is how the band spells it. So regardless of it looking like it has a spelling mistake, it's fine. They're a German band. They can spell it however they want. And then I have Let the Right One In, which Cage and I watched recently and I really enjoyed it. So um, yeah, excited to read the book or listen to the audiobook at some point, but for now, the movie was awesome. And then I have the corset lacing going up the back. It's just like thrifted ribbon. Also, sorry about the jingling. I don't know if I mentioned this um, in my little like talk about portion, but I added the little teeth to the back of the corset lacing. Um, so it's kind of fun. This coffin patch, which as we've discussed is like quite lopsided, but listen, it's cute, it's fine. A lopsided coffin is still a coffin, it works. And then on this side, we have the little bats kind of like flying up the waist. So I think that's super exciting. Overall, I think the jacket just gives like a really, really cool effect. I'm super, super pleased with how it turned out. I'm excited to see where it goes and I'm excited to like modify it more because like this isn't its final iteration. This is just its first draft you know? And I also find that it looks really cool with a jabot. I made one for my Draculaura cosplay like two years ago or something, so um, I will show some pictures of, or like video or whatever of me wearing it with a jabot because it's like, it's also a total vibe on its own. Yeah, I think this is like a really fun one because I wanted to blend both like kind of aristocratic vampire elements, but also kind of like the more punk and gothy elements. I was re-watching Lost Boys and just getting like super inspired by their jackets and like a lot of the vampire movies that I've watched lately have just like such cool fashion and such cool aesthetics and that's always just like been such an interest of mine that I thought it would be like fun to mirror it in some ways and I know <laughs> that this jacket has both aspects of like vampire stuff and like vampire hunter stuff on it which might be like contradictory or like confusing to people but I was watching uh, Grace Willow do like a vampire cosplay because I was like looking for inspiration obviously as I was doing this jacket and her character, I love this concept so much I thought it was just like so unique and cool. Basically they're like a vampire priestess and a hunter of other vampires because like as a vampire priestess they like worship humans because like that's their source of like lifeblood and they see like other vampires who like just tear through the humans and like don't like appreciate the gift of life or whatever as like sacrilege and you know bad or whatever so they're like out there hunting the bad vampires so their like costume just has all these like really interesting religious elements and it's all just like handmade hand dyed just hand chiseled like uh, stakes and stuff like it's just so cool highly highly recommend their video check it out if you're interested I'll definitely link it below but yeah I loved that concept of a vampire vampire hunter character so I figured <laughs> with mine I was trying to think of like a character or like a concept of like who would wear this and maybe they're like a vampire who's like trying to blend in with the vampire hunters so they're like garlic is like fake and their crosses aren't actually crosses they're like little swords and their like steak is like a fake like chopstick and like whatever whatever um, so they're like trying to like blend in with everything or maybe they're just like an overzealous fan um, of vampires and are dorky and like to put everything on their jacket because they're maximalists at heart. Regardless, it's a fun jacket. I hope to wear it out. I honestly am like a little worried about it just because of so many of the elements on it and also I'm worried of kind of looking a little bit like a dork, <laughs> which is hilarious because um, it's so hard to have fun with fashion without looking like a dork sometimes and you just like have to embrace it and do it sometimes and like if that means wearing your like overzealous fangirl vampire cosplay to work and just looking like an absolute weirdo at the uh, cafe job that you have, then so be it. But yeah, I'm hoping that like a cool show or something comes up and that I have the confidence and uh, the vibe and the feeling and the mood to, to wear it out soon because um, I'm very proud of this, but I would like to wear it more than just like in my bedroom to show online. So regardless, I thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope it maybe like gave you inspiration to like work on your own jacket or your own project. Like I hope that like the idea of like putting patches on stuff, putting spikes on stuff, putting embroidery on stuff, is something that you can incorporate in your own life if you are interested and if not that's cool too i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night or whatever you happen to be watching bye for now and thanks again see ya